giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Best of the West, uh, this incredible region shell that we have here where we take the time to uncover some incredible teams off one of the best regions in first. Uh, in the past, we've had team number eight, Pally Robotics, 987 High Rollers, and tonight's guest is another incredible team we can't wait to talk a bit about a bit more. Reporting for First Updates now, I'm Tyler Rhodes. And I'm Alex Insinger. Now then, let's welcome our guests for this evening. This team has entered the Hall of Fame back in 20, uh, 2008, and they've been a legend both in the state of Arizona and the entirety of the first world, including a Woody Flowers Award in 2013. While not being able to compete this year, 842's last two seasons has included wins at three of the four regions they've attended. Please welcome from Phoenix, Arizona, and a uh, team that I'm, I've been friendly with for a number of years, Hall of Fame team 842 Falcon Robotics. Cesar Miranda and Derek Ramirez, please, if you don't mind, introduce yourself and let us know what your role on A42 is and about how long you've been with the Carl Hayden Robotics Program. All right. Um, like um, do you want to go first, Cesar? Okay, yeah, I'll go first. Um, <laughs> right. I'm Cesar Miranda. I was on team for two years. I joined last year. Uh, last year I was a scout, but this year I'm head scout. So that's my role. Um, my name's Derek. I'm the president of the team currently, and I've been on the team since my freshman year, going for four years now. Hey, chat, just a reminder, too, if you do have any questions or comments for uh, this awesome team, just uh, tag at First Updates Now. That helps us out a lot. Type it in Twitch chat if you're watching live, and then tag at First Updates Now. And we'll try to get those questions near the end of the show. Uh, this is an incredible team and a Hall of Fame team, of course, as well, too. So uh, we're really hoping for some great questions coming from these teams. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get started, then. Um, let's start off by talking about the build season for you guys. Uh, when your team saw Infinite Recharge unveiled this year, what was your game plan immediately after kickoff? And take us some of the uh, take us through some of your initial strategy and conceptual robot design. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that. So, at first, when we saw the kickoff video, we were thinking more of like a 2016 vibe. So we started mm -hmm. looking at 2016 videos, 2017 and 2018, and mm -hmm. we kind of like went off of robot designs from that. We used a lot of parts from like 2017, um, and we took inspiration from robots like 971 um, from previous years, um, 2019. It was, I mean, it was it was pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about like the build season. Um, so, so how about as a as head of as the head of scouting, um, Caesar? What were some of the things that immediately popped out to you as things you were going to look out for? and things that you would um, want in another robot that you might want to include in your robot? Um, immediately, like the main focus was the climbing. We felt like climbing was going to be a bit of a task, and we knew that immediately from the start that it was going to be a big difference for the season. And so immediately we looked at like possible ways that we could climb. Um, we also noticed that like the size difference in trench was going to be a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. And so immediately we started just writing on a, on a whiteboard that we had just ideas that we wanted for the robot and like, sizes that we thought would help us give us the advantage for the rest of the season. You know, look, looking at uh, this machine as we go through, uh, can you talk a little bit more about this climber? Like, what, what made you choose kind of that flip-out design there versus maybe uh, having, a like, a telescope or something like that? Um, I'll talk a little bit about that, yeah. So, um, initially, like, I'm a, I'm a big fan of 971, so I started looking at their 2016 bot and how everything kind of folded in. Sure. Um, and I wanted to make, like, a really compact robot, so... Um, we started looking at ideas of how to make it compact and um, like how how we could use as much space on the robot as we can. So that came out with like our little flip um, idea or pivoting. Yeah, we also, go ahead. We also yeah, tell us because we knew that it wasn't going to work well with our robot size. 
And so we just decided to just maybe do the flip thing, and it worked a lot better than we assumed. Sure. Um, I, I guess a question for you is looking, you know, into, I, I want to take a little bit of a step back, looking at kickoff uh, and then kind of moving forward a few days. Do you guys kind of have a, a general, like a timeline that you try to follow? I mean, obviously no bag this year, a little bit different uh, as mm-hmm. we went through. Are you like, hey, by day five, this is where we want to be. Can you kind of take us through your first few days and maybe some milestones you try to hit? Um, so throughout the first few days, we usually try looking at videos and prototypes. Um, we we start developing like what we want to do during the week. So we followed the six week schedule. Sure. And we started building off of that. So like the first week was dedicated to building our drive base and maybe like start prototyping subsystems. So after that in week two, we started like prototyping more, testing new ideas, then three kind of finalizing some of those and then going on from there, just finalizing parts on the robot and looking at other ways we can improve. So I guess going off that, what were some of the challenges that you faced during the build season? What were things that worked and what were things that didn't work throughout the course of your your six-week build season? Oh, one um, point was the, tel- the telescope that we had in mind. Um, mm-hmm. That was, like, at first, like, our biggest idea for the clone. And uh, also one thing in the video, like, we have a video of where we're doing the one-side roller or one well, one single roller. And after, like, trying that out for, like, a really long time, we decided that, like, one roller wasn't going to be enough, that it, the ball was going to bounce out. And so we decided adding, adding a different roller, and that helped us, like, really have the ball push in where we wanted it to be. So this is your single roller uh, prototype here, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, on, that's on our um, defense spot, actually. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's more like programming ball. We just have programmers run, like, code on it, so, like, small code. That way, I guess, you have everything set up for the bigger robot. Sure. That makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, looking, um, you mentioned that you look back to 971 uh, in the 2016 season. Uh, yeah. Were there any other robots that you took reference off of this year, or was it primarily that robot? Um, uh, 3647, the 2016 robot worked as well. Like, the yeah. idea of the other, having something to push in the ball inside helped us, like, help with that idea. Um, I really consider like a lot of the top teams. So I really looked into like 254's designs and like 1323 and 973 and all those top robots. And I kind of took ideas like parts and bits of robots and just put them together. So what, what are maybe a couple of specifics on that? Just like kind of drill down a bit more. Like, I mean, it's good to look at the robot, but was there something you're like, aha, this is like, this is exactly kind of the way we want to go or something? Um... I would say my biggest inspiration that we, an early idea that we had in the build season was to do kind of like a pass through type thing um, and have two intakes on opposite sides of the robot, which we didn't really put on because we realized that we, with our space, we couldn't really do it. So um, I wanted to go with like a design like 1323s last year where they could pick up the ball and then shoot it out the other way. Kind of wanted to do that and it didn't really end up working that way <laughs> so we're seeing this really wide intake on on screen here mm-hmm. uh, i mean that to me seems very i mean you talked about some of the top teams there it seems to be pretty consistent with something like that is this newer for you guys uh from looking at some of your previous designs have you gone with this wide of an intake before on bots or is this kind of a new experience for you um i say that it's really similar to our 2017 design sure of our of the ball intake actually because of the way like it comes down and all although it's not exactly like a like a kind of like a prey mantis arm if i were to describe it (laughs) (laughs) um so we really took a lot of inspiration from like our older bot and how that worked and other bots as well mainly like 971's approach from 2019 how they intake their cargo balls Okay, so you had mentioned before the show started that you designed the intake to be out of plastic to uh, be particularly flexible in order to like to have fewer issues with the intake breaking and make it more lightweight. So, what was some of the process for designing that? Because I know that um, you haven't had a whole lot of plastic intakes in the past. So, what were some of the processes you used or things that you did in order to design this intake in a way that you might not have ever done before? Um. Well. First, going off of the lightweight design, we kind of wanted to make this robot the lightest possible, or li- as light as possible as we could. Um, going on from previous years that we wanted to make our robots light and fast. So we kind of thought that making 
like more of a plastic ish type um, intake would be better for us and more lightweight, easier to change. And if it broke during the match, it wouldn't really be a problem because we could replace it easily. So that's how, basically how much did your robot that, weigh? <laughs> um, I think at the end of this, it was like somewhere near 75. The, the whole robot? I think it's higher. I think it was like 90. Is that without, no. 90. Is that without it, bumpers it, and, uh, and battery? Um, no, actually. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty light, yeah. <laughs> we, we didn't really put too much on the robot. We um, tried to... Or go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I was just going to transition. So you guys, uh, you, you mentioned, we've talked about your climber a little bit. We've talked about your intake. Mm -hmm. uh, what about your shooter? Can you walk us through some of the, the concept and process of that? Uh, what did, where did you start with initially, and then how did you end up later on for it? Um, so for a shooter, we started looking on Chief Delphi, um, and we found this like kind of box wooden one, and we started working off of that. I designed that, then we started we cut it out and we tested it, and then we realized that it wasn't really accurate because um, we couldn't feel, feed the balls in fast enough. We kind of hand-fed them, so um, we didn't really get accurate readings off of it, and we started making better prototypes out of wood, and we finalized it with metal, like sheets of metal on the side. The one on the screen that you guys see right now is like our first, first prototype. Yeah, just trying to get the ball shot and just like trying to see if we added another, like, like yeah. a wheel or something, I'll push it out quicker. So, so how did how did that work out? You know, going from where you had there, did you stay with a uh, single uh, wheel hood shooter, or did that evolve as well? Um, we actually ended up testing it with several different wheels. We tried like a couple of different um, materials. Um, I kind of forgot the names of them, so. <laughs> but <laughs> we we ended up leaving two wheels on there. I I believe they're four inch Colson wheels. Okay, and what what was driving those? Looks like a Neo. Uh, yeah, it was yeah. a it was a Neo, just a single Neo. Yeah. So then, in terms of practicing, what were the, some of the things that you guys did for driver training and driver practice this year? Um, so as soon as we got the the chassis built, we started driving it, and after that, like once our subsystems were all on the robot, we started driving around, practice shooting, mainly just like trying to cycle the robot and see how we could position ourselves and from where on the field. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any particular strategies you were you were aiming for or stuff you wanted to practice? Um, more of a trench run, like fast trench runs. Okay. Yeah, those are most important on our list of things to do for the season, just getting the trench run down because we knew that we'd cut down a lot of space and we knew we could score a lot more than normal. How do you do the actual tryouts for your team? Like, is it Do you actually do like trials and that sort of thing, or do you just pick somebody? How does that work? Um, yeah, don't we just pick somebody yeah. <laughs> like out of a hat or what? Well, except for like, no, for like no, no. Well, okay, so like if you had experience driving or that during the off season you had practice like driving one of the bots, then you're likely on the list of like like four people would be like great possible drivers. True. And um, the only times we really try out is uh, like like co drive uh, co pilots. Those mm -hmm. are the ones that are very like like we're not sure who's really gonna be it. We're not sure who wants to try for it, and so that's mm -hmm. the only time we do tryouts for that. But normally it's like it's up to whoever can show that they can drive the best. Yeah. So like heading off from our 2019 season off to um, state championships, I was practicing to be driver. So I ended up becoming like pretty good. And then I started driving. And then from there we started selecting like co-drivers. Um, yeah. Just real quick, want to go back to a question that came up in chat from JB987 uh, asking if there was a four bar intake extension on your robot. Um, can you, or can you repeat the question again? Uh, it's a question from JB987 says, uh, uh, if we're going to say it verbatim said that I just see a four bar intake extension. Oh yeah. So <laughs> we, <laughs> we have two pivot arms. One is controlled by, um, a bag motor with the axle. I'm, it's just like, it's a bag. It's, it's just like a simple, um, kind of pivot it's thing. Simple design. It's yeah. both sides. Both sides of the intake are connected by an axle, and then it just goes in and out. I guess <laughs> I don't know how to really describe it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's fair enough. No worries on that as well too. It's kind of hard to explain. Though. 
So what were some of the, the scouting processes and prep that you did for Arizona North, Arizona West before the events got canceled? Um, so uh, this year, I mean, before our kickoff, like a week before kickoff, uh, we did is we brought back an old game. The mentor decided just dragging any game. And uh, we didn't know what game it was until that day. And then he, we started separating groups and uh, we got a stronghold, I believe. Okay. And um, mm-hmm. he made us basically just like take the game apart, like pick up on strategies on ourselves, and at the end having a huge discussion on how to approach it. Mm-hmm. And so that helped us a lot coming this year because on the first day of kickoff, we all gave, got back to school. We wrote down like uh, like point systems, like how to get points, what ranking points, uh, different ways to approach them. And so like that helped um, off season really helped us like do things. And uh, since I'm a head scout, I was having the guys like constantly watch games whenever they could if they weren't helping on the robot. And I was trying to make them like pick up on things that somebody else couldn't have picked up on, and try to explain to them like what happened, and that, that way they'd be all on the same page, and understand like what they were looking at, and understanding how the game should be played. What were some of those things you were looking for? Um, like, for example, like some people pointing out that climb was probably more important when it came to the wheel. Um, mm-hmm. You notice that the like very like the week was a week three, week four, that uh, people weren't really spinning the wheel, and so like that helped us also well like building our robot. Like, okay, maybe. If we don't have time for that, it's okay because nobody else is doing it. <laughs> so just yeah. focus on our climb something. So it's just that, the small, those small things. Yeah. For, for actual scouting, do you guys use uh, tablets or paper? How does that work? Okay, so uh, the past two years, um, they've used Google Forms and sure. then have that into Excel sheet into like Tableau. And um, that's what I was my, that was my approach for this year. Um, one problem I did have is that a constant recording of like, how many balls are scored. So like in, in my mind, I just had them like write down like tally marks, and at the end, just input the number. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense to me. Um, and the last thing I, I, I want to ask you about, and we we do want to talk about Arizona North a little bit, uh, even though we didn't get to go to it, some of the prep for it uh, was eight forty two has obviously been in the eliminations a lot, both at championships uh, and at regionals uh, as well too. What do you look forward in you know in alliance selections as you get ready? As you've been in the position of being an alliance captain many times, uh, what is it that you look forward? to in teams when you're trying to put together your pick list and can you talk about maybe some of the criteria of your pick list as well too um every year it's completely different um so for the most part it's usually just who's able to play the game a lot better than everybody else uh one thing we do keep in mind is that our drive team is very important and to say well they're pretty important in the saying of like who we want to be with because we feel like the drive team doesn't feel comfortable with the team um they can persuade the way that the list is being formed but for the most part, we've never had that issue in the past couple of years. So usually just who plays the best and who we'd have, probably have a lot more chemistry with. Yeah. Or if you just pair up a 987, right? Yeah. That's usually <laughs> who it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, going on to the Arizona North Regional then. Um, 842, you were scheduled to compete at the Arizona North Regional in week three. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. When did your team find out about this event being canceled and what was your reaction? Oh, God. All right, so yeah. basically, like, we were in the in one of our rooms. We were just practicing, and then out of nowhere, um, two girls on our team come. They're screaming. They're like, "Oh, AZ North just got canceled!" And I was like, "No way!" So we rushed over to the other room, and then we found out, uh, or we saw the email that said, um, "Sorry to <laughs> like, sorry to let you know, but um, AZ North has been postponed." until later notice and i was like wow really <laughs> how, how long did that come out before the regional because some week three events people were literally like at the driver's meeting and they canceled oh um, it was actually two days the, two, yeah, two two days. Days. so it was yeah. it was monday we we're supposed to leave on wednesday afternoon to the yeah. regional yeah wednesday, we made that wednesday was load in so we luckily had a bit of time <laughs> That makes it, sense. It was weird because, like, I'm, like, a part of the Arizona Discord, and then we've had, like, other teams, like, like earlier that day, there was a team who said, like, oh, the caterer said that the event got canceled, and everybody was, in the chat was like, I don't know about that one. <laughs> so, I told them when I, so I told them when I got there, I was like, I think our event might be canceled. And then so when they found out, everybody got mad at me because supposedly I jinxed it. But that's not fair. Uh, <laughs> I, I was going to say, it's, it's really nice that the caterer finds out before the teams who pay thousands of dollars <laughs> to be there, but... You know, past yeah. that. So, um, speaking of which, I do want to ask you. Uh, and maybe we'll we'll recognize some other teams too. Is that at the uh, Arizona North Regional? Lots of good teams competing there. What other teams were on your radar uh, coming into this event? 
Uh, coming to the same events, it's always the same Arizona teams. Uh, 2403, uh, Westwood, 2478. Those teams really stand out a lot. Uh, we also saw a couple teams that, uh, like, uh, a team called 498 held their scrims. And usually went there, we saw a couple of robots, like uh, 6413. They stood out to us as well. And just, like, any team that that we saw, like, on Instagram or something, like, post the robot. And we're like, okay, maybe that's something to watch for. But those were the top two teams, that, top couple teams that came out to us. Okay. Very cool. Um, so then going beyond that, uh, last show we had 987. They won the Las, Ve- they won the Las Vegas Regional both in 2018 yeah. 20, and 2019 with you guys. Uh, in 2018, you picked 987. 2019, they picked you. Can you talk about your relationship with 987 and your thoughts on th- that team in general? And by the way, and beating them in 2017, right? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I'll talk a little bit about that. So, um I got to know the team, I believe it was 2018, but um, I knew them since 2017 when we went to Vegas and competed against them. Um, so we, our team has had like a relationship with them for a while now, and we kind of keep going back and forth. Like We send each other stuff sometimes, and um, it just, it's just like a, a little friendly thing. You know, we talk to amongst each other, we go and talk to to each other in our pits like when we're in competition it's all kind of like a little formal so were, yeah. were you guys planning on going to las vegas this year or were you were you picking a different regional uh, uh yeah yeah we were <laughs> the thing is that like we're like we're sort of like our budget for the year yeah was, like it's either we went to vegas and then we didn't have money for worlds or is that we went arizona north and then we went to worlds for we find yeah and so that was yeah. like the debate and so we just did with one of that and then like deciding just to go to worlds yeah no that, but that, Totally makes yeah, sense. If we so, qualified, if we qualified, <laughs> yeah. But we would have loved to go to Vegas, you know, compete with 987 again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you guys are you guys are always great there. So it's uh it's so cool to see that robot in person, uh, in, in both at championships and in Las Vegas as well too. So hoping hoping future years to have you back in Vegas as well. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw the robot this year, though. It looks amazing, honestly. Like, oh, 97? Oh, yeah. 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 It's beautiful. Was, yeah. They were, they were, I was they, they were playing for finals and yeah. we just dropped everything like 10 people ran into the main room and watched the finals and we're just cheering them on because they're like yeah. they're really crazy this year like definitely like a world world champion and a contender for sure yeah uh, so you know something to ask you we were talking about 97 just like them you guys are hall of fame teams uh or our hall of fame team as well too back from 2008 uh so how does this mm-hmm. legacy carry on with 842 obviously you guys probably weren't around in 2008 i'm guessing yeah, uh, so, <laughs> um, so looking at that you know how does that status stick with you in 2020 and beyond uh and what do you guys do for things like like outreach or impacting your community that sort of thing um we do the same thing like this year every year we held our big fll tournament at our school that's been happening on for a couple of years now um usually we try to like if, if there's like a company like uh scott still has this uh like this row affairs, like a bunch of train stuff. And they invite us every year, and we have gone every year. Um, recently, we've been connected with 6413 Degrees of Freedom, and every time they have an event and they need somebody to fill in the space, we go and we go help them out, make sure like they get what they want, and then, you know, just trying to, trying to be where we could be. And we love being out there and talking to people. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, uh, I know that um, in part through you guys were – uh, featured in several documentaries, um, some of which are about the founding of your team, which is just fantastic. If uh, anyone in chat hasn't gotten the chance to either see the movie Spare Parts um, or the, the short film Underwater Dreams, they're both about kind of the founding of Team 842 um, and some of the just like legendary stuff that this team has done over their history. Um, so how have being in these two films, how have they helped your team grow and be successful? And what um, was it like being in uh, being in these films? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely, it's been exciting knowing that like our team has so much recognition recognition due to these movies. Like it's really cool just walking around and then like you're talking to someone and you're like, oh, you guys are that team from the movie, right? And we're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's pretty cool. Like when we're talking to someone, they usually bring up spare parts, and they're like, oh, like cool movie. And yeah, it's, it's just like a lot of love coming our way, but um, it's helped us like get sponsors as well. Um, definitely put us out in the map a little bit. Um, who who's the uh, who's the lead male role in uh, Spare Parts? George Lopez, right? Yeah, 
Yep. Yeah. So does George George ever come around or anything like that? You ever see him since no. he did the movie? He got too famous. <laughs> the movie is what made him famous, right? Yeah. yeah. For sure. <laughs> I mean, hopefully he comes. But and do, do you just call him George? Is it just George Knight? Yeah, yeah. It's first name basis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no doubt well you know there's so many cool things going with your team i do want to we do have to wrap up here but i want to take a final question from chat uh just going back to your uh your intake and your indexer a little bit uh wondering uh if you can elaborate a little bit more on how your index system works uh they uh pack panda 786 was asking about uh if it's a hopper or a spindexer uh it, and uh, we'll kind of show it on screen if you can take us through it a little bit um, okay, so I'll go do that a little bit. So we decided to go with more of a hopper approach. We have like angled right now. That's on you, that you see on screen is cardboard. That's, that's competition the ready, baby. That's the cardboard. Yeah, that's right. that's the competition uh, bot right there. <laughs> yeah, but um, we replace all that with um, Lexan, like thin Lexan, and we basically went with more of a hopper approach so that. Um, when we go to the loading station, we could just drop the balls in there or we have the chance to pick them up um, with our intake. And we basically have them angled so that all the balls like go straight into our feeder area and up to the shooter pretty quickly. Um, we also have like these two little rollers that I don't think you can see in that video, but we added them a couple of days before the actual competition. And basically it helps the balls like get out of the way and not get stuck, and I'll follow a single path into the shooter. Uh, and real quick, final question from Joe in chat. Uh, wants to know uh, if we're going to be able to see any of these final images uh, shared on, on your website or on Chief Delphi or anywhere else they might be able to find. Uh, some things we showed today, maybe anything else you might have. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure we'll be uploading more stuff as like we get the school opened again. Because, Access to school, of course, yeah. right now, yeah, Right now it's closed for us, so we can't really do anything. We do have videos and other pictures of the robot, but they're not really like the greatest to show because they're earlier iterations of the same bot, and now it's way more yeah. um, finished. All right, so um, do you guys have any final thoughts about how the season went or just about your team in general then? Um, I don't know. We hope like we can actually like run the robot at an event one day, like further down the line when everything's cleared up, or if yeah, like yeah. if like next year if we have an event or something, we can just run the robot or something. Like that'd be really cool to have. Oh, we, we hope to see it, man. <laughs> so, sincerely, like I mean, this looks like a pretty awesome robot, and uh, obviously, forty two has been making great robots for many many years. Uh, so it would be be a shame if we don't get to see this out at some point. Yeah, and uh, yeah. definitely want to film behind the bumpers with you guys as soon as you go to a competition. So keep us updated. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Hopefully, for, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so unfortunately, that's all we have time for tonight. Thanks for everyone. Thanks to everyone for hanging out with us. Fun needs your help to stay loud, live, and independent. Please consider giving your support by joining Fun Nation with a subscription or bits on Twitch, becoming a patron at patreon.com slash firstupdatesnow, or just letting people in first know that this is where the, your team needs to be in order to get the information that they need. Don't forget to check us out on Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and live on Twitch. Yeah, I just want to give a big thanks to everybody and a big thanks to uh, 842 for taking the time uh, to go through their uh, their robot. And like I said, I can't, I, we got to be able to see this somewhere, guys. So hopefully it will uh, come up uh, where we have that opportunity to do so. But on behalf of myself and Alex, I want to thank everybody so much for tuning in uh, and to check out this incredible team. This will be on YouTube afterwards. If you didn't get a chance to watch it live uh, or you didn't see any of our other teams uh, from today, I'd love to have you check that out as well, too. Uh, so with that said, uh, Thank you for tuning in the Best of the West. This is going to wrap up Best of the West shows for now, uh, but we'll have more interviews coming on later for sure. So make sure you check out First Updates now uh, and find out what more content we have coming up for you. With that said, talk to you next time on Fun. See you then. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.